Let's do it again, shall we? Part three of seven things about Affinity Designer you may not know about. If you've not checked out the other two videos, they're up in the link at the top or down in the description as well. Make sure you do check them out either before watching this one or after, it doesn't really matter. Let's go. So for the first one, we've got the cat tool. So when you right click on your shape tool here, you can see all the different shapes that you can create. However, there is a hidden shape. If you hold shift and right click, you'll notice right at the bottom, you've got a cat tool. Now this will only show up if you hold shift. Now if we draw, you can see that we can create a cat. Now we can kind of make it a weird shape if we want. But if you hold shift again, it'll keep its ratio and we can make some nice cats. Now if we click off of the shape and let's say we click the diamond and create a diamond or whatever, you'll notice if we right click again, the cat tool will disappear. And again, if we hold shift, right click, there's the cat tool. I don't know if you'd ever need it, but if you ever need to add some cats into your picture, it's a, an easy way to add them. Cool, now that we've got a bunch of cats for no apparent reason, let's go on to number two, which is the canvas rotation. Now, I don't know about you guys, but naturally when I zoom into things, I'll use the scroll wheel to scroll up and down and then control to zoom in and out. But occasionally I'll, for some reason, hold alt and scroll to zoom in. And in Affinity Designer, that is locked to rotating the canvas and when I do this accidentally it always takes a bit of time to get it back to where you want it to be which is in the right orientation so to stop this happening what you can do is head up to edit preferences go into tools and then right at the bottom of this tick box list you've got enable canvas rotation with alt and scroll wheel if we just tick this off and hit close now if we hold alt and scroll it's no different from just scrolling the scroll wheel anyway and then control and scroll will be zooming in and out. So if you ever find that you're accidentally rotating your canvas when you don't want to, uncheck that box because it's it's definitely going to be helpful. So we're burning through these really quick. Let's go on to number three, which is the place image tool. So if we select the place image tool, it'll ask you to select an image, which will select this image right here and you hit open. Now, nothing actually happens until you left click and draw where you'd like the image to be placed. However, what you can do is if you right click, you can actually preview what the image would look like and think where you'd like to put it without actually putting it down or decide actually you may want a different picture completely. So once we've previewed it and think, okay, you know what? I want it to be here. We can then draw it in place. There you go. So it can be super helpful to preview it before you actually put it down. And it does preview it in its complete size. So as you can see, it's this is how big the image will actually be. When we draw it on, we can make it however big we'd like, but when we preview it, it will be in its full size. But it's something to be aware of that the image will be in its full size when you're previewing it. Now onto number four, which is changing the artboard shape. Now, a lot of people don't actually know you can do this. If you click on your artboard, which you can select it quite easily just by clicking the name at the top here, or you can select it in the layer panel on the right hand side, you have the ability to change the corner. And now you can change it to a rounded or straight and you can change the curveness percentage as well. Or if you would like, you can actually change each individual corner. So if we head over to this tick box here where it says single radius, if we uncheck that, you will have top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right. So you can actually change the individual curveness of each corner however you like. So if we wanted to, we could create something along the lines of that and then create our image within this and export it as this artboard. So rather than creating shapes within the big rectangular or square artboard, we can actually change the artboard shape to make it easier for whatever we're creating. Now within this cogwheel here, you actually have some presets. So if we click on this, you can see that we can change it to any of these if we ever wanted to use any of them. Or what you can also do is go into these three lines here you can click on that and you can actually create your own presets as well and manage the presets if you want to get any really fancy ones. There are some really cool ones in here if you ever want to see them. Okay, so on to number five, which is transform objects separately. Now that might be like an ambiguous title, but let's explain it. So here we have two circles which are exactly the same. So if we select both of these circles and then try and resize, you'll notice that the bottom right one will kind of make its way closer so the gap between the circles stays around about the same. You can see that quite obviously. And you might be thinking, so what? Up in this top bar here, we've got transform objects separately. Now, if we enable this by clicking on it, now if we transform the circles, you'll notice they'll stay in place, 
but transform the circles to being smaller, but it keeps them locked to where they're positioned, which means that if you need to resize two things but not move them, this is your best bet. So now we can actually uncheck that. And now if we resize, you'll notice again, they'll get closer together. And if we reselect it, we can actually make them bigger and they'll slightly overlap. So oftentimes what I'll find is before I realized this existed, I would resize them together and then move the second one across just to make it how I wanted it to be. Whereas if you transform them separately, you don't even have to do that. You can just leave them where they are and just keep them transformed. Okay, on to number six, which is the add-on store. A lot of people don't actually know this exists and there's a lot of stuff in there that you can use. So how do we get there? The easiest way to is if you head up to the top right corner, you've got your little account symbol. If we click on that, here you'll see all your add-ons that you've already got installed, if you have any, and you can just hit at the bottom, browse the store. This will take you to the web page of the store. You can have a look through this, but there's a lot that you can use, whether it's different brushes, different overlays, different types of textures. There's a lot that you can choose from. And in the top left corner of each, you can see which software that they work really well with. So this one is compatible with Affinity Designer, but not Photo and not Publisher. Whereas you've got this one down here, which is compatible with all three, because you can see all the icons are colored rather than being grayed out. So you've got a lot of things to choose from. So if you ever are stuck for something and you think there might be something within the shop that could help you, have a good look. There are a lot of things that you can use which are very helpful. And once you have purchased them, they'll be added to your add-on section here where you can download them quite easily just by clicking the button that'll be located here. So the last one for today is something I wish I knew a lot sooner, and that is saving how your screen looks. So you can see I've got my studio shaped how I like it with all the windows on the side here, and then I've got the windows on the right, which I use the most. Now say if I moved these around and maybe delete a few, or got rid of that one and that one, and then just move this one over here, and. And I thought, you know what, I want to go back to how I had it and I don't want to have to go through opening the ones that I had and closing others and blah, blah, blah. So I can hit this shortcut and automatically everything gets opened back up and everything sits exactly where I had it. Now, how do I do that? I'll tell you. Right now, I've got my studio how I like it. If we head over to view and then down to studio presets, you can add a preset. And when you add a preset, you can name it something. So I've already got one, but I'll call this default too. But now if we head over to view, and studio presets you can see you've got another preset so this is the shortcut that i used just before so it gives itself a shortcut as well so Control shift and two for this one and the one that i did use was Control shift and one but it means now if i get a bunch of these move them around or if i want to add some extra ones and bring it over because it was on my other screen for some apparent reason i can just hit Control shift two and everything snaps back in place all the things that i didn't use get closed again and it's nice to keep everything where i want it to be so what you can do is you can have different presets for different things let's say you're going to be creating graphics you want a specific layout or if you're going to be drawing you're going to want a different layout set those presets so you can change between them however you like you can also manage them and delete them if you want or apply them but trust me the shortcut's going to be the easiest way to do it but if i ever need to or if i've ever lost all the windows that i want control shift one and it'll all be back to exactly how i want it to be so that's seven more affinity designer things that you may not know make sure to drop in the comments if you did know any of these and if you know any other ones make sure you drop them in the comments below you never know you might be able to teach someone else about something if you've not checked the other two videos they're up in the top link at the top and down in the description below all the social links are in the description below if you want to follow me on anything but as always i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one